Hi, my name is James O'Keefe. I'm captain of the Massachusetts Pirate Party, and uh, this is the second uh, of our 2024 Pirate News episodes. I'm joined today by um, uh, Quartermaster Joe and First Officer Steve. How are the two of you doing? Fantastic. Doing great, Jamie. Okay, so we're trying something different. Uh, so hopefully the audio will be okay. <laughs> We're trying to record it uh, instead of live streaming. So we'll see how this goes. Um, all right. So up with some local news. Uh, uh, we had a visitor from uh, Australia. Um, and uh, he was from the Australian Pirate Party um and had a wonderful time meeting with him uh that was um miles i'm gonna mispronounce this i think it's pronounced Whit whitaker i hope i got that right i'm sure he'll correct me um and uh we had uh two dinners with him uh and uh various pirates had a chance to meet with him and talk with him and share ideas. Um, upcoming for us is on um, Saturday, February 3rd, uh, from noon to 4 p.m. online, uh, will be our uh, winter conference. And we encourage everyone who wants to, uh, is interested in the Pirate Party to come by uh, and talk with folks. We'll have time for open discussion. Um, that we have discussion uh, additionally uh, uh, we'll be talking and, and doing trainings for candidates and then uh, we're going to end with a discussion of kind of pontificating uh, maybe not pontificating uh, thinking about what's going to happen in the upcoming presidential election and the federal offices and what we should do um, to prepare ourselves for which whatever event, whatever possibility uh, will occur. Um, it, so that's coming up. Uh, and then one other thing this week is, um, sorry, this, this week is, um, uh, <clears throat> apologize for this. Um, where's my tab? Is the Location Shield Act? Uh, so we encourage you to contact your uh, state representative and state senator in support of that act. The key thing that that would do is it would uh, prevent any data broker from selling the data that they gather gather on you. Uh, about your location data, um, and that would be incredibly important. They would they would prevent they couldn't sell it to the police. They couldn't sell it to um, other organizations. What whatever their particular political persuasion is or not, uh, and that as pirates we want to make sure we all have privacy and. Uh, we think this is an important bill to support, so please uh, do contact your state representative or state senator and urge them to support the Location Shield Act this week, preferably uh, preferably Monday, but certainly by Wednesday. And uh, there'll be a link in the description for how you can find your state representative or state senator. Um, with that stuff out of the way, uh, Steve, you had um, an update on the world of AI. Part of it is the world of AI, um, and part of it is the world of copyright. Uh, <laughs> so it's uh, it's it's tech and copyright. So these are these are piratey topics. Um, but yeah, so back in 2022 uh, a company called open AI, the open ai institute released a you know a i guess we call it a generative ai model 
um, chat GPT, something that you could uh, basically ask questions of and it would provide information. Um, chat GPT has done some, you know, over the last year or so since, well, yeah, year and change that it's been out, uh, it's done some interesting things. Um, like telling a, a Guardian journalist um, that he was dead and providing a fake link to uh, the journalist obituary. Uh, some attorneys have used ChatGPT in order to help write briefs, and ChatGPT has generated case citations for cases that did not exist. Um, a couple of attorneys have gotten themselves into 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 trouble for that. Um, but you know one of the things that you know so it's these are you know computer you know, I'll, I'll use air quotes intelligence is a hard um statistical problem and you know the models are you know they're they're big uh they're complex and sometimes they surprise you i mean the same thing could be said of uh, software in general, but I think machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence, it's, you know, that that statement applies you know, perhaps a little bit more there. So anyway, um, you know, so open OpenAI's uh, chat GPT has been trained on a corpus of something like, it's hundreds of gigabytes of data. It's lots of stuff. And one of the things that, you know, part of that corpus of data is the, um, are a, a whole lot of New York Times articles. And now the Times is suing them. Um, and basically, you know, the, the gen, it's a, you know, it's a copyright lawsuit. The, the idea is that you're uh, infringing upon our work. And, you know, this is sort of a, a new case in, uh, or a, a new kind of case in copyright field. There are some some things that might give us precedent, um, like for example, um, you know, way back in the day, VCRs. Remember VCRs? Yeah. So Sony, the maker of Betamax, um, you know, a, a VCR maker, was sued by Universal Studios, and Universal Studios says, "Well, your device could be used for copyright infringement." Uh, it turns out they lost. Uh, Sony ended up prevailing, and the judge's opinion was, "Well, because your uh, the VCR has some uses that are, you know, don't involve copyright infringement, like time shifting. You know, you you record something to watch it later. You know, it was okay." Um, Google versus the Authors Guild is is another sort of you know kind of similar case. This is involves Google's books project, where the uh, Authors Guild sued Google to prevent them from digitizing, and uh, it turned out that uh, Google ended up winning that. It took a, took quite a few years, but they ended up winning. Uh, Napster and I think the RIAA, I don't remember who the other party was in that case, but uh, Napster was a, you know, an, an older peer-to-peer -peer file sharing thing and people used it to, you know, basically share music files. Uh, they were sued um, for copyright infringement and uh, Napster happened to lose. Uh, there's another sort of similar case going on where uh, Getty versus a company called Stability, yeah, Stability AI, um, Getty, they, you know, put together and sell, they market uh, stock image libraries and Stability AI is, I guess, a product that um, can do, can generate, you know, it, it generates, it uses AI to generate images, but some of those images use bits and pieces of, um, bits and pieces of uh, Getty's, you know, image corpus. So, you know, this is another case where uh, we have another fair use test. And, you know, I don't see Congress, uh, <laughs> the, or the current state of Congress doing anything to sort of help resolve this. So I guess this one is off to the courts. Um, so in the description, there's a um, there's a link to a Vox.com article that gives a, a fairly nice overview. And, you know, there are, there are other, uh, you'll see plenty of people writing about this on the web. But it's, um, you know, it's a, I thought it was a good, good pirate topic to talk about. Thoughts, gentlemen?
So uh, just as a reminder, Napster wasn't peer to peer. That's why they got them because ah, people would upload okay. to their servers and then they could download from their servers. But they, they, you know, they haven't been able to go after torrent, uh, you know, torrenting or going after uh, interplanetary file system, for example. Okay, um, thank you for that correction, James. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Wouldn't going after torrenting also be notoriously difficult because the files bounce so fast? You know what I mean? Like you get a little bit from here, a little bit from there. So you're really just grabbing it from literally everywhere, making it so impossible to actually track. I thought that yeah. was more movies of torrenting. Yeah, certainly. But that being said, um, yeah, so very interesting that it's a copyright issue or how they were doing it was the whole copyright angle. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess uh, one of the things that I would be concerned about is if I'm an individual, um, if I'm a writer or I'm an artist and I copy someone else's work and I tweak it and change it and come up with um, something that's different and new, uh, that's kind of how we, you know, as, as a writer, you know, you're reading, uh, you know, you're reading things and seeing how people put words together. As a artist, you're seeing what people have created visually and then you, use those ideas so in some ways it feels like the ai is doing that although they're not a person doing that and it is basically a giant or a large corporation with a large amount of money to spend to spend for uh compute cycles to be able mm -hmm. to do these computations and come up with you know paragraphs and paragraphs or images or things like that. Yeah. Um, so it feels like, I don't feel like open AI, uh, well, I don't feel like Chappie G GPT is learning, right? It's just stringing words together. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's also a question of what is fair use. You know, is a computer technically a fair use in the use of somebody else's work that they've put together. So it really is more of a, do we have to define what fair use is and is the use of mechanical software? So one of the interesting cases that this reminds me of is when somebody tried to um, copyright the picture of a wild animal, a particular monkey. Um, oh, yeah. But, Yes. If you remember that, that well, mm -hmm. the monkey took the picture of, of well, himself. Himself. <laughs> the, and the selfie, yeah. the monkey selfie. So, I mean, you can't, if uh, the monkey selfie, and he tried to copyright that, and you can't copyright it. And I think we're going to end up following a similar line like, you can't copyright AI work. So, anything that the AI comes up with is going to be something that's completely public domain, you know? Or and or whoever's work they get it off of, it it belongs to them, you know. So if you're quoting Shakespeare, that work would still be Shakespearean, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there are just there are four factors for fair use um, that should be considered, including the purpose and character of the use. Uh, i.e. is it commercial in nature or educational, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole, and the effect of the use upon potential market for or value of the copyright work. So, for example, if, um, you know, someone had a piece of art in... Uh, for example, a gallery where they're selling it. Um, if I took a photograph of the art itself, that uh, could be thought of as infringing. 
or not. But if I took a picture of my uh, child looking at the art and pondering it, then that's a different story. And uh, that, that could certainly be covered by fair use, if I recall correctly. I'm sure we'll be corrected. Um, so, Joe, you had some updates on taxes in Massachusetts. Yes. So our wonderful governor, Miss Healy, um, and I'll leave it at that, you know, has come up with an idea to completely undo the huge tax break she gave to basically the millionaires in in Massachusetts. So all the people that have money, she basically cut a billion dollars in taxes. And so all the towns have been like, oh my God. So they wrote up this nice little package to make it even harder for us, the, the working person. Um, and then, so, Tax on food for eating out, taxes on cars, and taxes on uh, hotels. So anyone staying in a hotel or uh, anyone coming to visit, making it much harder for them. However, instead of just making this an overall tax, um, she puts it in the hands of the municip municipalities. So they can turn it on and off and make the tax structure... So that way, if they implore it, it doesn't go on her. It goes on the specific municipalities. And I know I'm super summarizing this, but that's the gist of what I got from it. Uh, it's called the, uh, the Municipality Empowerment Act, I believe. Municipal Empowerment Act, yes. Yes, thank you. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, gentlemen? Well, to, to clarify my understanding of the tax cuts they did were, excuse me, um, it was focused at, say, for example, um, renters and helping out renters more, helping out parents more, um, as well as seniors. Now, there were some tax cuts that would benefit um, someone who's well off. So for example, short-term capital gains, that tax rate fell. Um, but uh, to characterize it as it's a tax break that helped the wealthy doesn't feel right, but you'd have okay. to go look at the, the numbers to be absolutely, it, it, it probably helped the, you know, this, I'm sure wealthy have a lot of short-term capital gains, so it'll help them with that. Certainly one thing it also did was to raise the um, the the kind of the threshold at which the the estate tax would apply. Um, it was at one million dollars, and now it'll be at two million dollars. And you know, if, if you're a house rich person uh, when you die, that could certainly help your family. But uh, well, I mean. It, this is Massachusetts. Um, homeowner and millionaire are basically synonymous. Um, you know, housing here is real expensive, <laughs> uh, especially in eastern Massachusetts around, you know, in the greater Boston area. I don't know. The um, so my understanding is that the you know, the these these different forms of taxes, the uh, for cars, it's it's actually the auto excise tax uh, for hotels and, you know, there's municipality or hotels um have it there is a hotel tax it's a small per, it's a percentage of you know what you spend there and likewise there's a meal tax um what this bill would do is you know as, as joe said it puts it up it gives the municipalities a choice so these are it's what's called local option legislation which means that the municipality gets to um gets to you know vote on whether they want to adopt it I think that's actually the right way to go because different communities have, you know, their, um, you know, their, their different financial challenges and different financial situations. Uh, so where one might say this, you know, this could be beneficial. Uh, the other might say, you know, we don't need this, so we aren't going to do it. Um, you know, being a, having been a town meeting member for nine years in, 
in Arlington. Uh, one of the things we do every year is we go through the budget and, you know, it's, it's always an exercise of, you know, you want, there's, you know, generally you have uh, residents who also, you know, aside from paying taxes, they also desire services. So is, you know, people would like an animal control officer. Well, is, is, is that, you know, is that or better schools or, you know, whatever, um, you know, it's a case of, well, is it, you know, there's a cost to, there's a cost and benefit kind of calculation that goes on into that. Well, yeah. And when I say, when I was saying that it benefited the rich people, I was specifically speaking to the capital gains tax because I don't mm -hmm. have a million dollar house. Uh -huh. thing. You know, I'm a plebe. <laughs> you know, so people who do have $2 million in their estate, they're pretty well off, I would have to say, and a lot better than most of the population. You know, and granted, million dollars is, or even $2 million is still not even considered fabulously rich or stupid rich um, at this point anymore. I mean, I remember one time having millions of dollars at your disposal was, you were doing pretty good for yourself, but now, nowadays, that's not really the case. Mm -hmm. but i don't know if i would say that but you certainly certainly people most people would rather have a million dollars available to them <laughs> than not yeah well, I I mean, dollars, i'd spend it all <laughs> so i'm sorry for interrupting i was going to say i had not heard of the uh, municipal empowerment act before you brought it up joe so um you know, this will be something I can read about during the during the week. And uh, thank you for, um, you know, bringing it to our attention. Well, I do nothing but at least pay attention to what they're doing in the government. That's part of my charm. With that, um, thank you very much, uh, uh, Steve and Joe, for joining me uh, at this uh, in this episode of Massachusetts Pirate News. If that's something that you're interested in, in helping with, by all means, send us an email, info at masspirates.org. You can always find us at masspirates.org. Um, and do, uh, you know, put, put a note that the conference is coming up on the 3rd. We'd love to hear your voice uh, and love to have you part of the conversation. Uh, if you find this useful, find these videos useful, please like, share, and subscribe, and all of that. Uh, and certainly, as I said, we'd we'd love your help in producing these or even being a participant. Um, and if you're interested in being a candidate for upcoming um, uh, officer elections, just check out masspirates.org or probably the description below, and there'll be details of how you can do that. So with that. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful week and hope to see you next week. Bye.